Lindsay. Welcome to Central Standard Craft Distillery. I'll be your tour and tasting guide for the afternoon. Uh, we officially opened our doors here in 2014, but planning started in 2013. We had three initial owners. They were all buddies from college. They always knew that they wanted to get into business together, but they weren't quite sure what they wanted to do. Their first still cost $175,000. They had nowhere to put it, no one to run it, and zero distilling background. But things went well. You will see Wisconsin, Iowa, and Nebraska. These are the three states that the owners were originally from. Central Standard, they all fall under that time zone. That is where our name comes from. Our logo, his name is Walker. We're named after the neighborhood that we are in, Walker's Point. The style of the walking man, it has a lot to do with farming. Two of our owners were farmers. Distilling starts from a farm. Kind of just all the work that goes into it and then the bottle on his back is just carrying all of that work and kind of paying tribute to that. I'm gonna start off like any good tour should with some vodka. Our vodka is a rye vodka. A lot of distilleries will use wheat or potato. They want to make their vodka flavorless. Or uh, a lot of people choose vodka as a drink of choice because you can stick it into pretty much any mixer and it's pretty much disguised. We wanted our vodka to stick out, so that is why we chose rye. It's naturally sweet and naturally spicy. The taste really goes well in drinks like a Moscow Mule. The ginger really brings out some of the sweetness and spiciness. Same thing with the Bloody Mary. As for the distilling process, like I said, mash is 100% rye, so we stick all of our rye into our still. You heat it up, everything mixes with water for a good three to four hours. At that point, you guys will see the two tubes on the wall over here. Those actually connect to our still and everything goes over to our fermentation tanks that are the next room over. Everything sits in there for about five to seven days depending on which spirit we're making. And that's where the yeast is added. The alcohol magic happens, you know, it uh, breaks down the sugar and such. It makes the fun part. This part here is called the steam lip. Our entire system is run off of steam, so it's more environmentally friendly and more cost effective that way as well. So like I said, 173.2 degrees, vapors start to rise. It goes into the helmet. The helmet, however, does need to be made of copper. This is because the vapors that rise have sulfites in them, and when it hits the copper, there's a chemical reaction that causes um, all the things that you do not want to digest actually become heavy and fall back down into the still. Everything that we're going to make um, our spirits out of goes up through the U-pipe and into our portal system. Each of these portals are at a different temperature, and the vapors will circulate through there until it becomes 180 proof. At that point, everything goes into the condenser. The condenser is full of a bunch of cold water pipes, turns the vapors back into a liquid, and then everything will come out here at the spigot. Everything comes out in three separate parts, the head, the heart, and the tails. The head is essentially like your moonshine, your white lightning, the things that they say you'll go blind if you drink it. The second part that comes out is about half of the liquid that is called the hearts. The hearts is the cleanest, the purest, the safest to drink, has the best look, taste, and smell. These, like I said, only part that we use in our spirits. The last part that comes out is called the tails. After the head, heart, and tails are separated, the hearts all go into a huge tank. And it's still at 180 proof at this point, but we do dilute it down to either 80 or 90 proof, depending on what we're making. From that point, everything is hand bottled and hand labeled. Um, we can only fill four bottles at a time. Uh, we do have a labeling machine, but then all of the bottles are, have a batch and a bottle number written on them. Next, we're going to try our Door County Cherry Vodka. This is a newer product. First, we made this only for at Miller Park. It was for the brewers. It went over really, really well. We had a few cocktails that were available there. And then we kind of found the demand to bottle it. Typically, when we start bottling something, we have a big bottle release party, tell everybody about it. This was one that we just kind of did just to see how it went, and we were not prepared at all for how well it went over. It was released on a Friday. I was doing tours the next day, Saturday, like this time, and it was sold out here. You couldn't find it. This is still our vodka, but it has Door County Cherry. Perfect for summer. Really good in a Moscow meal rather than regular vodka. We make the vodka, and then we add the cherries. It sits, then add honey afterwards, and everything is filtered. And that's that, there's no artificial colorings or flavors.
This is an American style gin. Gin is our owner's least favorite spirit as well, so if they were going to make a gin, they wanted one that they would drink. It is still a gin, so it does have juniper in it, but in addition to juniper, there is chamomile, coriander, lavender, rose hips, and shizandra berry. On its own, you could taste either sweet, salty, spicy, sour, or bitter. So everybody's palate is a little different. You get a little different flavors. All of those flavors can be found in one berry. All of our ingredients come from a 150 mile radius, except for Shizandra berry that is found in Asia. When everything is getting mixed up in here, we throw in 40 pounds of juniper. We put it in a mesh bag. So essentially it seats like a tea. And then after the portal system, there's actually a section here missing called the gin basket. The gin basket looks like the condenser, but you throw one of these windows on it. And that's where you put all of those botanicals. That's where you put the coriander, chamomile, rose hips, lavender, and shizandra berry. And then it goes into the condenser, head, heart, tails, diluted, bottled. The bourbon that you're going to be trying is a bourbon blend. It's aged for one year. Anything one year to 24 months is considered a blend. 24 months after that is considered a straight bourbon. We also do make that. There's a lot of rules that go into bourbon. One of them is that it has to be aged at least for one year. The second part is it needs to be at least 51% corn. Ours is 70%, so it can be more than that, but it cannot be less than that. It needs to be made in the United States. It must be barreled in brand new, never before used, white oak American charred barrels. So this is why you see so many breweries coming out with like bourbon barrel aged stouts or porters. Throughout our barrels, there's like a honeycomb fixture. This honeycomb fixture is so more liquid hits more surface area. So even though it's a 12 month bourbon, it's gonna taste a little more like 18 months. Just enough to give it that caramel look and some of those caramel flavors you might taste but also still lets enough of the liquid absorb into the actual barrel to pull out some of those natural tannins from it. So we make two different ryes here. We make our own original recipe, which we consider our high rye. It's 95% rye, 5% corn. But this one that I'm gonna have you guys try is our Washington rye. This is named after George Washington. He was a master distiller. He made rye. His recipe is public knowledge, like you can look it up. So we did get our hands on it. Uh, we recreated it. So the differences you have to consider compared to George Washington, one is clearly time period, and two, we'll keep it local. Otherwise, the recipe is the same. 